Welcome to this week's Security Brief, the third week of April. First, make sure you are subscribed for more news and future content. In the first news story, an incident involves the popular messaging platform, Telegram, and its Windows application, where a zero-day vulnerability was discovered in the Telegram Windows app, which was being exploited to launch malicious Python scripts on users' devices. The issue was identified and promptly addressed by Telegram, although the exact timeline of the exploit's discovery and fix has not been disclosed. This security flaw affected Telegram's Windows application, potentially impacting a vast number of users across the globe. The vulnerability was exploited to execute unauthorized Python scripts, which could lead to data theft, privacy breaches, or further malware infections. Telegram has since fixed the zero-day vulnerability, and we urge all users to update their Windows application to the latest version to ensure their security and privacy. Stay tuned for more updates on this developing story. Next news story, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, issued a warning about a significant surge in SMS phishing attacks, known as smishing, targeting American drivers. The smishing attacks deceive victims into believing they owe unpaid road tolls. The warning was recently issued. The smishing campaigns aim to steal personal and financial information from unsuspecting individuals by exploiting the common use of road toll systems in the country. In other news, the Canadian retail chain Giant Tiger has fallen victim to a cyber attack. A hacker has claimed responsibility for the breach, leaking over 2.8 million customer records online. The data breach was disclosed by Giant Tiger in March 2024, with the leaked records surfacing on a hacker forum recently. The breach affected Giant Tiger's database, which includes stores across Canada. The breach was caused by a security concern related to a third-party vendor managing customer communications and engagement. Giant Tiger has confirmed that the leaked information includes customer email addresses, names, phone numbers, and physical addresses, but assures that no payment information or passwords were involved. The company has notified all relevant customers and is taking steps to address the situation. For those concerned about their personal information, the database has been added to the Have I Been pd one website, allowing individuals to check if they have been affected by this breach. Stay tuned as we continue to follow this story and provide updates as they become available. Furthermore, we're following up a developing story as Palo Alto Networks has addressed a critical zero-day CVE-2000-24-3400 vulnerability that was actively exploited to backdoor firewalls. The exploit targeted PanOS firewalls, with device telemetry and global protect enabled, allowed unauthenticated attackers to gain root code execution through command injection. The exploitation began on March 26, and hotfixes started rolling out recently. The vulnerability affected PanOS versions 10.2, 11.0, and 11.12. The exploit was used by threat actors, likely state-sponsored, to install upstyle malware, breach networks, and steal data. Palo Alto Networks has issued hotfixes for the affected versions and is working on more for later versions. Meanwhile, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA, has ordered federal agencies to apply mitigation or disable telemetry by April 19. Approximately 22,500 firewalls are possibly vulnerable, with the majority located in the United States. Despite the release of patches, many systems remain unpatched and vulnerable to attacks. Stay tuned as we continue to monitor this situation and provide updates on the cybersecurity front. Next story, Cisco Duo's security team has issued a warning about a data breach that has compromised customers' VIP and SMS logs used for multi-factor authentication. The breach occurred when hackers targeted their telephony provider, resulting in the theft of sensitive data. The full extent of the breach is currently under investigation, and Cisco Duo is taking steps to address the situation and enhance security measures. Stay tuned for more updates on this developing story. Next incident involving Dutch chipmaker Nexperia. The company confirmed that hackers breached its network. This breach comes after a ransomware gang leaked samples of what they claimed to be stolen data. The attack targeted Nexperia's network infrastructure. Nexperia announced the breach late last week, acknowledging the incident occurred in March 2024. While the exact motives are unclear, such breaches are often financially motivated or aimed at disrupting operations. Nexperia is currently assessing the full impact of the breach and has not disclosed further details. We will continue to follow this story and provide updates as more information becomes available. Stay tuned! 
Next story, Putty, the SSH client has been affected by a vulnerability. The vulnerability affects users of the Putty SSH client, specifically versions 0.68 through 0.80. However, the exact timeframe of when the vulnerability was actively exploited is not specified. The issue, identified as CVE 2024-31497, could potentially allow attackers with access to 60 cryptographic signatures to recover the private key used for their generation. The exploitation of this vulnerability could lead to unauthorized access and data breaches, as private keys are crucial for secure communications. Next news. Back to Cisco, a worldwide leader in IT and networking has issued a warning. The warning is about a large-scale credential brute forcing campaign. This campaign is targeting VPN and SSH services on devices worldwide, including those from Cisco, Checkpoint, Fortinet, SonicWall, and Ubiquiti. A brute force attack is a process where many usernames and passwords are attempted until the correct combination is found. Once the correct credentials are accessed, the threat actors can hijack a device or gain access to the internal network. The attack started on March 18, 20241. The attacks are global, lacking a specific focus on particular industries or regions. This suggests a broader strategy of random, opportunistic attacks. The purpose of these attacks is to gain unauthorized network access which may lead to account lockouts or denial of service conditions. The traffic related to these attacks has increased with time and is likely to continue to rise. The campaign uses a mix of valid and generic employee usernames related to specific organizations. All attacks originate from TOR exit nodes and various other random anonymization tools and proxies, which the threat actors use to evade blocks. Services used to conduct the attacks include Tor, VPN Gate, Ipidia Proxy, Big Mama Proxy, Space Proxies, Nexus Proxy, and Proxy Rack. The Talos team from Cisco has shared a complete list of indicators of compromise IOCs, for this activity on GitHub. In late March 2024, Cisco warned about a wave of password spraying attacks targeting remote access VPN, Ray VPN services configured on Cisco secure firewall devices. It remains unverified whether the attacks Cisco is warning about today are the continuation of those seen previously. Moving on to the next news. The US Federal Trade Commission, FTC, has reached a settlement with the telehealth firm Cerebral. Cerebral, a remote telehealth company that provides online therapy and medication management for various mental health conditions, will pay $7 million over allegations of mishandling people's sensitive health data. The FTC's complaint charges Cerebral and its former CEO, Kyle Robertson, with disclosing consumers' personal health information to third parties for advertising and not adhering to its cancellation policies. The settlement was announced on April 16, 2024. This is a nationwide issue in the United States, impacting consumers who interact with Cerebral's websites, applications, and services. Cerebral allegedly violated its customers' privacy by revealing their most sensitive mental health conditions across the internet and in the mail. The FTC's announcement also lists some alleged bad practices followed by Cerebral that resulted in varying levels of exposure of sensitive health data for consumers. The proposed order, pending court approval, includes provisions such as a refund of $5,100,000 to customers impacted by deceptive cancellation practices, a $10 million civil penalty, limited to $2 million due to Cerebral's inability to pay the full amount, and a permanent ban on sharing health data with third parties for marketing and advertising purposes. Next story, the Sandworm hacking group associated with Russian military intelligence has been posing as hacktivist groups. The group has been hiding attacks and operations behind multiple online personas. According to Mandiant, the threat actor is linked to at least three Telegram channels that were used to amplify the group's activity by creating narratives in favor of Russia. The group has been active since at least 2009, with multiple governments attributing its operations to Unit 74455 the main center for special technologies, GTSST, within the main directorate of the general staff of the armed forces of the Russian Federation, GU, better known as the main intelligence directorate, GRU. The report was published on April 17, 2024. The attacks are global, targeting various entities. The group has been using online personas for data leaks and disruptive operations. The purpose of these attacks is to gain unauthorized access and control of systems. The group has established itself as Russia's preeminent cyber sabotage unit. They have been involved in attacks on water utilities in the US and Poland and a hydroelectric facility in France. Moving on, 
LastPass cyber criminals posing as staff from LastPass, a popular password management service. These criminals are running a malicious campaign targeting LastPass users with the Crypto Chameleon Phishing Kit, which is associated with cryptocurrency theft. The phishing kit was spotted earlier this year targeting Federal Communications Commission FCC, employees using custom-crafted Okta Single Sign-On SSO pages. The incident was reported on April 18, 2024. The phishing site was hosted at the domain help-lastpass.com. The attackers are using multiple social engineering techniques, including voice phishing, where they pretend to be a LastPass employee trying to help secure the account following unauthorized access. Victims receive a call from an 888 number claiming unauthorized access to their LastPass account and are prompted to allow or block the access. If they choose to block the access, they're told they will get a follow-up call to resolve the issue. A second call comes from a spoofed number, where the caller, posing as a LastPass employee, sends a phishing email from support at LastPass with a link to the fake LastPass site. Entering the master password on this site allows the attacker to change account settings and lock out the legitimate user. The malicious website is now offline, but it is very likely that other campaigns will follow and threat actors will rely on new domains. Users of the popular password management services are recommended to beware of suspicious phone calls, messages or emails claiming to come from LastPass and urging immediate action. Some indicators of suspicious communication from this campaign include emails with the subject, we're here for you, and the use of a shortened URL service for links in the message. Users should report these attempts to LastPass. Next story, a new Android banking malware named Sumnibot. Sumnibot is using a less common obfuscation approach by exploiting weaknesses in the Android manifest extraction and parsing procedure. This method enables Sumnibot to evade standard security measures found in Android phones and perform info-stealing operations. It uses three different methods that involve manipulation of the manifest file's compression and size to bypass parser checks. The incident was reported on April 17, 2024. The malware targets Android devices. The malware is designed to steal information from Android devices. Upon launch, Sumnibot requests its configuration parameters from a hard-coded server address and sends profiling information for the infected device, including number, carrier, etc. Next, it initiates a malicious service that restarts every 16 minutes if stopped and transmits stolen data from the victim every 15 seconds. Moving on, the Akira ransomware operation has breached the networks of over 250 organizations and raked in roughly $42 million in ransom payments. The ransomware emerged in March 2023 and quickly gained notoriety after targeting victims across various industry verticals worldwide. By June 2023, the group's ransomware developers had created and deployed a Linux encryptor to target VMware EC virtual machines widely used in enterprise organizations. The incident was reported on April 18, 2024. The ransomware has impacted a wide range of businesses and critical infrastructure entities in North America, Europe, and Australia. The Akira ransomware operation is demanding ransoms ranging from $200,000 to millions of dollars, depending on the size of the compromised organization. The ransomware group has added over 230 organizations to its dark web leak website. For our last story, the hospital Simone Vale in Cani, CHCSV, an important medical establishment in France, was targeted by a cyber attack, severely impacting its operations and forcing staff to go back to pen and paper. The hospital has 2,100 employees, including 230 doctors and a capacity of 869 beds. It handles 150,000 outpatient and 50,000 emergency room visits, performs 9,000 surgeries, and assists in 1,500 births annually. The cyber attack occurred the morning of Tuesday 16th. The details of the attack are still being analyzed with the help of expert partners. So far, there has been no demand for ransom nor any data theft identified. Investigations are ongoing. Emergency, medicine, surgery, obstetrics, geriatrics, pediatrics, psychiatry, home hospitalization and rehabilitation units continue to operate. However, all data handling has fallen to pen and paper practices, and some patients are being diverted to other hospitals nearby on a per-case basis. Unfortunately, roughly 30% of all non-urgent surgical procedures scheduled for this week have been canceled due to the cyber attack, and many non-urgent consultations were rescheduled for later. Thanks for listening to this week's Security Brief. 
Make sure to like and subscribe for future news and content.